Here's Trace Jackson Davis. Watch as he emphatically denies Giannis not once, but twice. Giannis, Giannis got it back, he blocked him again! After these two significant blocks, he charges down the court and is on the receiving end of a spectacular lob from Steph Curry, sending the full house at Chase Center, home to 18,000 cheering Warriors fans, into a frenzy. Trace Jackson Davis, what a sequence! To merely call Trace Jackson Davis's influence on the Warriors' significance would not do it justice. His presence has added a crucial dimension to Coach Kerr's strategy, revitalizing a team that was previously criticized by many as being too small, too slow, and past its prime. His rookie season has been filled with standout moments from blocking Jalen Brown to thwarting Giannis Antetokounmpo to giving Victor Wambanyama a welcome to the NBA type of moment. These highlights merely scratch the surface of his achievements. Looking at his statistics, they tell an even more impressive story. At first glance, averaging 7 points and 4 rebounds might not seem extraordinary, but there's more to the story. For example, when we explore the highest field goal percentages of the year, we find notable names. Nikola Jokic ranks 11th with 58%, Giannis Antetokounmpo comes in 8th at 61.5%, Rudy Gobert is 4th with a 64.9% shooting accuracy, and leading the pack, Daniel Gafford of the Dallas Mavericks boasts a 70.6% field goal percentage topping the chart. Jackson Davis unfortunately doesn't appear on this list due to eligibility criteria requiring a minimum of 300 field goals made or being on pace to hit this mark. His limited playing time early in the season means he's projected to reach around 200 field goals. Yet, if Coach Kerr had increased his minutes sooner and if he met the qualifications, his field goal percentage would not only place him on this list, but it would catapult him to the top with an incredible 74.1%. But. That's not where the story ends. Take a look at the player efficiency rating of every Warriors player. For those unfamiliar with this metric, it's a comprehensive calculation that evaluates a player's overall contributions to the game, taking into account everything from points, rebounds, and assists to turnovers and more. Over the last decade, eight out of the 10 MVPs were players with the highest PER, highlighting its significance. Among all the Warriors this season, even surpassing Steph, Trace Jackson Davis boasts the highest PER. Now, I'm not suggesting he's better than Steph. That would be a wild claim that's wrong on so many levels. However, it's undeniable that Jackson Davis is an exceptional talent. So it's truly remarkable and a bit baffling to consider that 56 players were selected before him in the NBA draft, especially considering his reputation. After all, he was the Naismith Award runner-up in NCAA basketball, an honor bestowed upon the top college basketball player. This begs the question, how could a player of such high caliber be overlooked and selected so late in the draft? Well, we're about to dive into this enigma. By examining every detail and scrutinizing the circumstances, we aim to unravel the mystery of how exactly Trace Jackson Davis ended up being drafted after so many others. One immediate thought in addressing this question is the demand for power forwards. With Trace Jackson Davis standing at six foot nine and playing the four in college, a logical assumption might be that there were a surplus at that position across teams, possibly leading to a lower demand for his role. However, a closer inspection of the 2023 draft for power forwards reveals this isn't the case. Before Jackson Davis was selected 57th, eight power forwards had already been drafted. Notably, both Jairus Walker and Taylor Hendricks, who share Jackson Davis's height and position, were chosen in the lottery as the 8th and 9th picks, respectively. There was even a relatively lesser-known power forward who was picked at number 52. This evidence clearly refutes the notion that there wasn't a need for power forwards. In fact, it demonstrates that eight other teams were indeed looking for players with significant size and skill in that position. So, we remain puzzled as to why 56 players were chosen before him. One might speculate whether he was overlooked by teams. Was he somehow not on their radar? Despite being a Naismith Trophy runner-up, could it be possible that teams overlooked him? Well, probably not. You see, Trace Jackson Davis is no ordinary athlete. He's the son of Dale Davis, a standout first-round pick in 1991 who also achieved all-star status in his career. Trace had connections deep enough that, even in his high school years, he managed to access the Pacers' locker room where he snapped a photo with Paul George. Furthermore, he was a member of the 2018 FIBA Under-18 team that clinched gold. His teammates included future NBA players like Cole Anthony, Io DeSumo, and Quentin Grimes, placing Trace Jackson Davis in esteemed company. Clearly, TJD was far from being an unknown. 
And here's where the tale takes an even more unexpected twist. You see, Jackson Davis has been an Indiana native his entire life, deeply rooted in its basketball culture. From his early days in elementary, through middle school, high school, to college, Jackson Davis was essentially the embodiment of Indiana basketball. In fact, he was known as Mr. Basketball in Indiana. So his workout and tryout with the Indiana Pacers was a moment of pride. Judging by his expression post-tryout, he appeared assured that he had aced it. Similarly, the Pacers' reaction was quite telling. Unlike the usual practice of just posting a photo of tryout participants, for TJD, they created a special montage video. This video highlighted his prowess in attacking, dunking, three-point shooting, defense, and more. It looked as though everything was falling into place for Jackson Davis to join the Pacers, especially since they were poised to draft four players that year. However, in a surprising turn of events, none of those four picks turned out to be TJD. Feeling sad, embarrassed, and angry are understandable responses in such situations, and TJD was no exception as he went through all these emotions. When the Pacers chose Mojave King with their number 47 pick, it was a clear sign to TJD who then couldn't contain his emotions and declared, y'all will regret it, I promise you. In an unexpected twist, the Pacers had another opportunity with the number 55 pick, but once again, overlooked Jackson Davis. At this point, Warriors' new general manager, Mike Dunleavy Jr., was astonished by how far TJD had fallen in the draft, prompting him to trade for the 57th pick. This strategic move is what led to Jackson Davis joining the Warriors. Digging deeper, it still begs the question, how could so many teams, with their legions of professional scouts, overlook an athlete of TJD's stature? Being the second best player in college basketball, a proven leader, an athletic powerhouse, and a consistent double-double achiever, it's puzzling how 56 players were chosen before him, including by his own hometown team. Well, the short answer is that NBA scouts suck. <laughs> the longer answer is that scouts likely did not view Jackson Davis as fitting within the current paradigms of basketball players. Specifically, he was a big man who lacked three-point shooting capabilities. Throughout his four years of college basketball, TJD did not successfully make a single three-point shot, a crucial aspect that scouts prioritize. In the current NBA, the ability to shoot from distance is valued across all positions, as it plays a crucial role in offensive strategies by spreading the defense. Players such as Ben Simmons and Giannis Antetokounmpo perfectly exemplify the impact of shooting limitations in the modern NBA. Defenses often allow them more space on the perimeter, consequently constraining their team's offensive strategies. However, this doesn't mean that teams are completely averse to drafting big men lacking in three-point capabilities. Take Derek Lively as an example. He doesn't shoot threes and was selected at number 12, but his towering height of seven feet sets him apart. NBA teams seem to value those extra few inches highly, and at six foot nine, TJD falls short in this regard, making him less appealing. Moreover, scouts were convinced that TJD's primary advantage of physical dominance near the rim might be less effective in the NBA. You see, in college, he may have been competing against younger, less developed players, but in the NBA, it's a whole different ball game where he would face seasoned, fully developed professionals. Jackson Davis's age was another factor that likely influenced teams' decisions not to select him earlier. Unlike many draftees who enter the NBA after just one season in college or other pro leagues, TJD completed four years of collegiate basketball. The benefit of this extended college career is a solid foundation in the fundamentals. However, the drawback from the NBA team's perspective is the perceived limited scope for further development. Being 23 at the time of the draft means that after only a few years of development in the NBA, he would reach his prime, soon after which his performance might begin to decline. Given the relatively short career span of the NBA players, every year is valuable. In contrast, a player like Victor Wambanyama, if we ignore the obvious height difference, entered the league at 19, giving him a substantial development window before reaching the age TJD was when drafted. Regrettably for the teams that overlooked him, and luckily for the Warriors, Trace has been thriving in the NBA. True, he might not stretch the floor with three-point shooting, but in every other aspect that a big man can and should excel in, he's performing exceptionally well. Whether it's setting screens, rolling to the basket, guarding the rim, or dominating the glass, he's excelling in all these roles, showcasing skills that are invaluable to any team. This is particularly true for the Warriors, who have faced constant media criticism for lacking in these areas. Y'all will regret it. That sediment seems to be resonating across the league right now. 
The ultimate potential of Jackson Davis still remains uncertain at the moment, but it's becoming evident that he's quite the draft steal. In fact, a recent Bleacher Report article on a hypothetical 2023 redraft positions TJD now at number 14. Intriguingly, Brandon, another Warriors pick who was initially taken at 19, is now rated at number 7. By the way, are you familiar with the moment Brandon Podzimski emerged as a star in the Warriors organization? He's been a standout all season, but have you pinpointed the precise instance when he cemented his status as a Warrior star? If you haven't, no worries, because I've got just the thing for you in this video here. 